This is a live bass tone workshop. It's not the definitive bass tone workshop. It's just the way I approach tone. And we're going to be looking at uh, various different tones. We're going to be looking at soul, Motown sort of sounds, and uh, blues stuff. Uh, I'm sure we've got some blues players out there. I know that my blues videos are doing pretty well on YouTube, uh, so that's cool. Uh, we're going to look at 60s style bass tones, um, rock stuff. We're going to look at pick playing. You know how to get a, a great rock pick tone or just a great pick tone in general. Um, how I get the big country kind of sound. So that's Tony Butler's um, game. You know, I'm kind of the way I emulate that. Um, we're going to look at the the 80s classic Mark King slap tone that he used live. You know, in on the, um, the Physical Presence album and live at Wembley stuff like that. Um, we're going to look at what I call a modern slap tone, and we're going to look at, uh, just have a look, quick look at that kind of flea, that more rock, uh, punky kind of uh, slap tone and fingered tone that, that people use. Um, so, And then we're going to look at various ways of getting those different tones, because there are different approaches. You know, some of it's using an amp, some of it's using the controls on the bass, some of it's the way you play the bass, um, some of it's the choice of strings or the choice of bass or pickup, right? So we're going to look at that. How long have we got? <laughs> We're going to look at how your technique affects the tone, uh, which I might have said. Uh, talking about DI sounds versus using an amp. Um, and I'm going to show you how you can get similar sounds using both and where you might use one and where you might use the other. And we're going to look at string choices and how all this relates to gigging live and also how it relates to working in the studio. And then we're going to talk about the rules and whether there are any or not. So, uh, yeah, uh, just before we actually crack on, anybody else joined us, Jan, or have you got any, um, any, any more hellos or anything? Yeah, we've got uh, Vincent Sansoni, says, very cool, Scott, always informative. Thank you, sir. Uh, Nathan Fullerton says, buttercream pea bass, nice. I just bought a seafoam green Vintera pea bass. I'm loving having an alternative to my jazz, to uh, jazz bass tone. Cool, yeah. And Lee Waterson says, wow, 24 hour stream. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, I've, I've, I want to take questions as well, by the way. I'm going to have to set this. a timer, you know. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to set a timer over here. Okay, no, I am. They, I say, really, they say women can talk. You're, yeah, I'm not joking. Look, I'm going to set this timer now right, before it turns into a comedy show. I'm going to set it for an hour and um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Um, Okay, so let's crack on. Uh, we're going to... Let me just have a quick look here. Okay, so the first header I've written down is tone. Um, so what is tone, right? So for me, it's it's kind of like three things. It's probably like a load of stuff. By the way, I'm no like technical expert. What I mean by that is I'm not going to pull out graphs and charts and uh, you know I'm not a physics expert. This is just from pure experience and using my ears over the years. Um, so yeah, one part of tone for me is the shape of the note, right? So what I mean by that is the, the attack, how quickly the note kind of appears and then the decay, you know, how quickly or like, you know, in what way it, de it decays, it, it falls away. I'm, I'll give you some practical examples of that, obviously in a minute. Another is the, the color, uh, of the note. That's the harmonic content. So a lot of 60s stuff and, um, you know, things like double bass and, and it has a very fat, round kind of tone and maybe not a lot of, you know, harmonic content. Whereas, um, you know, people who play with round, wound strings and, and a pick or slap, that's got a lot of harmonic content, a lot of colour to it. Uh, and then we've got what I just call like the weight and the overall brightness of the tone. So the weight is just the fatness of the tone uh, and the brightness is is what it is, you know, is, is, is just kind of almost like the treble, how much treble there is in, in, in its simplest form. So let's look at, uh, Janet's got a question for me. Yeah, I've got a couple actually. Vincent's asking, is that a 34 inch scale? It is, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm in a funny place at the minute because um, yeah, I've sold nearly everything that I owned to exist <laughs> through, uh, through <laughs> lockdown. But uh, I, if, yeah, we'll get back to the short scales. Just quickly guys, what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm going to rattle through all this stuff and then I'll open it up at the end to, to questions, if that sounds cool, Jan. I think Lee was just asking, though, would you say you could use tones on an electric acoustic bass as well? You certainly could. Right. You certainly could. So you can go yeah. into that later on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yes. Um, so let's have a look. Uh, what tools do we have to create tone? Well, we've got our, the first and foremost, we've got our fingers. So the way you play the bass uh, changes the tone. Um, so um, before I actually play it, 
Let me just talk about that. So if you if you play up here, you get a fatter tone. A lot of you will know this stuff. If you play here, you get a more middly, porky kind of tone, etc. Um, you can play soft, hard. You can dig in. You can get more buzz. You can do a load of stuff just with your hands to change the tone. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing you've got is EQ on, on either the bass. Funny sound going on there. I think it's your phone. I think it is. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we, you've got EQ on the bass or on the amplifier or in a plug-in or whatever. So just EQ and effects and things like that. So the electronic side of it. And uh, now my watch is ringing. And why is tone important? That's an, uh, another thing that I wanted to throw in there. And tone's incredibly important. It might not seem it until you really look at it. But the wrong tone, especially in recorded music, just stands out like a sore thumb and it doesn't support the song or the track. Um, you know, it, it's really important to pay attention, in my opinion, to getting the right tone for the music you're playing. Uh, and are my tones that I'm going to show you the ones that you should use? Well, not necessarily. They're just my approach and they're my tones. But if you've not really looked at tone before or you're a little bit lost with it, they'll probably be a great starting point. Um, and finally, are there any rules? And I would say no. Um, there are some what, what I might call traditions, if you like. There's some, you know, like in blues, you might expect to hear a certain kind of tone. Um, and in, in rock and roll, you might expect to hear a certain kind of tone. And in metal. But at the end of the day, if everybody stuck to those traditions, nothing would move forward. And a lot of the times, the players that really stand out are the people that just kind of broke the rules and did their own thing and created their own voice. So not really, uh, although there are kind of guidelines, if you like. Um, so let's dive into the tone. So what I've done is I've set some tones up. I'm not using uh, an amp. We've not kind of got room to uh, to do that in here. So I'm using plugins. So don't everybody hiss. <laughs> so let's see if this works. Uh, we should. Let me just switch my thing over here. There we are. I think, yes. Everybody should see uh, an amplifier. Now, what I'm going to do, I've got, as you've already seen, I've got this um, this P bass plugged in, and I'm just going to turn all these effects off. So we're just hearing the instrument completely, completely flat, okay? Just increase the gain a little bit over here. Wow. Not that much. So this is um is a P bass, you know, it's it's uh, it's a it's a copy actually, but it's a lovely bass. It's got a Seymour Duncan pickup in it, and um and it's got a nice set of flat wound strings. So that's a kind of very very typical kind of uh, P bass tone. Now, did I actually turn the wrong thing off? There we go. Right, okay. Now what I've done here, I'm gonna look at a, a Motown kind of sound to start with. So let me see if these drums work. So that's a kind of typical, uh, what I call Motown kind of sound. Now we can improve that uh, even more. That's uh, the kind of sound you might hear, um, like I say, on Stacks, Motown stuff, uh, James Jameson, Duck Dunn, that, um, those kind of players. Uh, but Jameson did, uh, went a stage further. So let me, let me show you what I've got set up there to start with, right? To get this kind of tone using an amp, um, you want to be using an amp that's preferably not got a tweeter, or if it has, you want to turn the tweeter off. So this has got like a virtual speaker. Uh, and if I go to the, you know, the tweeter control, I've turned it off. I don't want any of that. All right. Uh, the amp itself, it's, I, I really listened quite closely to, um, to uh, Jameson earlier. I heard some um, isolated bass tracks. And there is a surprising amount of mid in his tone. You know, it's not like as bassy as you might think. Uh, it sounds like the, the, the guitar... Is, is wide open, 
so the tone's on full. Obviously, he's got old flat wound strings on there. Um, so the, the EQ, I'm using very, very little. I'm using the bass flat. I've got the mid boosted a tiny bit, and I've rolled off the, uh, the, the, the treble just a tiny, tiny bit to get rid of any clank. All right. And then what I'm going to do, Janet, let me know if anybody's heard of this trick, right? I'm going to use the foam trick, right? Uh, and what Jameson used to have, I think Fender Bases used to come with this, was a little bit of foam under the bridge, right? And it, um, check it out. I'm going to do it now. You can use anything, really. I've used sponges, dishcloths. <laughs> Anybody <clears throat> tried it? Another, I think it's Anthony. Great, right. thanks. I think it is because it's Sway Band Crew. He's right. saying it sounds pretty good flat with no effects as well. Yeah. Uh, and Paul Taylor's saying it sounds cool in the headphones. Brilliant. Oh, that's so it. So I've not got any um, update on whether anybody's... Ah, okay. Andy M65, Music Man Sterling has the foam pads. Of course, yeah. And uh, I, th I think Rickenbackers do, I think, as well. You know, that you've got, um, like, a, you can turn it on and off, like a mute um but with fender it was like you, it was a kind of like screw it on and that's it done you know so what you can do like i say is just put a little bit of foam um under i'm just using sponge type stuff you can tr experiment flip-flops are really good for this cut out of, you know get your wife's flip-flop <laughs> and off. just uh, get off my flip-flops <laughs> i've actually done this to be honest <laughs> and uh, yeah and what this does is this changes the shape of the note right so without the uh, the mute in there, flat wound strings are pretty similar to the way uh, a double bass works, where you get um, a fairly punchy, quick attack, and then a, 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 a lot less sustain. You know, the note falls away. It goes quieter, faster. And when you do this, check it out. It does it even quicker. It's just a beautiful sound. You get this kind of hump at the start of the note, and then it sustains quietly. It's it's really lovely, right? I thought you were going to play sitting on the dock of the bay there, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boom, boom, boom. There right, they, that's <laughs> it. So let's try that with the drums. Let's see how that works, okay? So hopefully you can really hear the, the difference. <laughs> What's she laughing at? <laughs> Scott Paul has joined us. Hiya, Scott. All right, uh, Paulie. He, he's saying uh, uh, cut down yoga mats work perfectly for mutes too. There you go. Let's good. hope it's Scott's own mats and not his good <laughs> ladies. Right, I'm going to rattle through. So, so very quickly, that is all that's going on there, right? That is literally all that's going on. Now, you've got to remember back in those days, there wasn't a lot going on. You know, people weren't using huge graphic equalizers and things like that. I'm using um, a compressor after the fact here as well, okay? So that just helps kind of like make things a little punchy and even things out as well. Um, and sometimes uh, Jameson's sound was quite driven. It was hard to tell whether that was the speaker that was kind of, you know, broken a little bit. Um, farting is the uh, technical term or whether the amp was being driven. Let's j try and emulate that a little bit. Uh, I don't know if it'll want to do it, so I'll just... Let's have a look. Clean as a whistle. Let's turn it up. Let's try that. Certainly, some of Duck Dunn's uh, bass lines certainly have that kind of slightly driven sound. And in the mix, it sounds really, really cool. So that is about it. What do you think of the mute if you'd never heard that before? How cool is that? Um, you can also get that uh, effect without the sponge by palm muting, right? Uh, works just as well, pretty much. Let's try that. Let me just uh, get rid of that distortion. Let's try that uh, with the track. You know, it's similar, but it's just not as easy to play because you've got, kind of got to keep your palm going doing that all the time so that is about it for um uh for the motown kind of soul sound that's kind of all i've got to say on it for my money that's it you know um there's there's not a lot more to do so let's move on janet did you have any something 
urgent come up there? Uh, we've got, uh, give me a gig, uh, says, I would like to switch between foam and no foam, depending on the style, but the foam makes the string sharp, so I would have to retune. You're right. Now, I mean, an, an, anybody who's got perfect pitch probably went insane when I did that, because it will have, you know, shifted the tuning slightly. Um, is that because it pulls the string a bit? Or it, it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. The intonation can go a bit odd as well. Um, so, you know, so m maybe... <sighs> The ideal thing would be to to have another bass, I suppose. Easy in the studio, isn't it? But on a gig, um, I think if I was going, if I was actually going the whole hog with that tone, I think I'd have a try and have a second bass set up specifically for that. Okay, so let's move on. The next I've got on my list is is blues, right? Now, actually, I'm going to skip that and I'm going to go to sixties for a minute, right? Because Essentially, that is a 60s tone that we were looking at that. Now, that was a very specific thing. Um, you know, a lot of bands, great as they are, and, and as much as I love them, you know, they weren't doing that funk thing uh, to mention, uh, especially like the, the, you know, the beat bands. You know, um, they were doing a lot of root and fifth kind of stuff. So let me see if... I've done a track for this. Just give me one sec, guys. Lee is just actually saying, Lee Waterton, uh, that technique sort of reminds me of the sound Ronnie Lane had in the Small Faces. Right, yeah, uh, which is, you know, again, it, it's it's from that kind of period. Um, no, I've, I'm not certain. So let's let's just use that. Um, let, let me get, look at this. This is amazing. I use a thing called Virtual Drummer. I'm going to have to rattle through these, aren't I? <laughs> let's just, uh, Superior Drummer, sorry. Um, so let me just pull um, a different groove up. Let me do that. Clear all things. I'm just going to go with whatever happens. That's not very 60s, is it? Neither is that. <laughs> oh, failed. Hang on. Let's try this. Right, that'll do. So... Yeah, it's kind of 60s, right? Okay, so... This exact setup, because that's what was going on, you know, flat wound strings were the main thing. It was only really after John Entwistle and The Who, uh, you know, like my generation, started getting that twang. Most 60s stuff was um, either, you know, like a Hofner short scale bass or, um, you know, or similar, like maybe, maybe a Gibson um, or an Epiphone and, uh, or a P bass, pretty much, or jazz, and with flat wound strings on. So let's try that. Here we go. I'm distorted, Jan. Oh, eh? It won't do. Just can't get the staff these days. So, kind of enough said. You know, that, that tone's going to do... I would say less of the foam mute for like straight 60s beat band sort of stuff um and that's going to give you a 60s tone so let's move on to blues um i could take some like mini questions there if anybody has any before i move on uh, and they forget while i open this file if, if you want to see if there is any jam uh laurent's just joined us actually he says pb rules i'm assuming is that p bass it is rules uh hi to both of you how are so, you doing laurent so we've got Malaysia, we've got Toronto, we've got France. It's very, <laughs> I very, love it. Very yeah. cool indeed. It's All great. right. Um, by the way, this uh, this P bass, it's actually a very very cheap one. Check it out. It's uh, it's by a. That was actually, <laughs> it's by a company called Richwood, um, and it's a Chinese made thing. But it's a lovely bass. Um, it's got a nice pickup in it. So right, I'm loading up my my blues track. Have we got any blues players out there? We'll see. We shall see. What I want to know, I want to know if people have used anything like quite ridiculous sort of at the last minute to do that muting. Like if they're on a gig yeah. or something like, I don't know, a pair of socks or... I'll tell you what, tell you, free, free in my shoe CD, right? For, yeah, the most ridiculous um, entry <laughs> for uh, a bass mute. It's got to be genuine, but it could, you know, even if it's like a last minute thing Absolutely. at a gig or whatever. 
All right, let's see what we've got here. So I'm going to have a go at uh, playing a bit of blues, and then let me talk about what I've got going on. I'm not even sure if this is... So that's what I would consider a nice kind of round sort of blues tone. P bass is just going to do it all day long, right? This this kind of guy, you, you know, you, it, it's just right out the gate, especially with flat wine strings on. Yeah, Come we've got a blues player on. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, Gospel we, Bluesman says, I'm a blues player, I think, lol. <laughs> <laughs> well, how are you doing? By the way, just, just before I, I kind of carry on, on on this, I'm talking about a, a really kind of traditional, if you like, whatever that is, blues tone. Now, blues is 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 kind of like it, it's one of those things that, that term covers so much music, and you hear some fantastic players using like Warwick five string basses with active electronics slapping and all kinds of stuff. So, um, you know, I'm talking about you know just that kind of real, you know, traditional for want of a better word tone. The P bass is going to do it. Now, let me just um, pull up what I'm using on the screen. Okay, I've I've used two approaches to get this sound right. Now, one is to just use EQ and a little bit of compression. So let me show you that, right? Hey, oh. It's all going horribly wrong. So here we go. There's my compressor. I'm not really going to say too much about it. It's just a bit of compression. You know, um, I'm looking more at the tone here. Um, I'm going to turn the, the EQ off. And what you're going to hear now is the bass straight into my interface. No EQ, nothing, okay? Um, and that sounds like this. So it's it's a long way there, you know, and um, and and was talking about you can use your fingers to to change the tone. If I play softer here, right? Listen to this. And if I move back and play harder, you get more mid. And if I move back here. Even more mid. Back here. Okay, and if I roll that tone control off, all right, and then play there, you get a really, really fat, warm tone. Town? Town? <laughs> so that's without using anything outboard at all. Um, you know, that's just, just uh, playing with the bass. EQ flat and what I found is when I was messing around earlier is I just dipped the mids a little bit uh, around around 350 okay so you just if you've only just got one mid control dip the mids a bit I've got the bass flat uh, and I've rolled the, these the ones that are black aren't working they're not on right so I've just dipped the mids a little bit and then I've just what used a high pass filter. What that's doing is, it, it's almost acting like a speaker. Uh, so you hear that that treble end, right? If when I turn this on, the more I turn, pull it back, right? If I go crazy, it just gets rid of it completely. So in my mind, that's just taking away some of that clanky finger noise kind of thing. Uh, let's hear the difference. So this is without, all right, and with. You know, so let's just try that with the track quickly. And again, you know, for, for that kind of tone, for that kind of music, that's about all I will do. Right? Like I say, I'm using a little bit of compression as well. Um, that little bit of growl that is still in there when uh, a, a band's playing, that's going to be great. You might even not want to roll off as much of, you know, this this high stuff here. And that's the kind of stuff you could just, this could be your uh, treble control if you don't have, um, you know, like if you're not using an EQ like this, that could be the treble control on your amp. 
So there we go. Okay, Johnny. Yeah, Lee's just asking, what do you think of heavy distortion on bass? Blur used it on song two. Yeah. And it sort of defined the sound of that song. Yeah, well, I'm going to look at that as well. Uh, how are we doing for time? Uh, uh, oh, we're doing all just right. after half past. I better yeah. rush. <laughs> Yeah, we'll look at that, definitely. Somebody, uh, Vincent's actually saying as well, I'd like to see a workshop on piccolo bass, unless you've done that already. Uh, I've not done one yet, but that, that will come. Okay, so let's. I'm going to look at rock tones fully enough now. So that's going to kind of encompass the distortion thing. Um, one sec. I'm doing the whole very focal thing, as you can see. It's very good. <laughs> Hope everyone's uh, enjoying this. Hope there's um, there's some value to this uh, to you guys. I've never done a, a tone workshop before, so um, I'm enjoying it here. Well, well, that's good. I'm finding it very interesting, yeah. Scott. Thank you. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> so let's see what I've got out the gate. I can't remember what I left uh, set up. I've got a DI sound and an amp sound. So we're going to hear the amp sound I've set up. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to switch bases now. Um, and the reason being. It's because most, again, no rules, right? Most rock players, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, generalizing, use round wound strings these days. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Gospel blues man saying, um, like an ampeg scrambler, I like sometimes. Very cool. Yeah. Um, Lee Waterton says, like McDonald's, say, I'm loving it. <laughs> Brilliant stuff. I can't fault you guys. I, I'm singing that in my head then. I spoke it, but I'm just kind of, I'm loving it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Vincent's now got... saying great workshop, by the way. Oh, thank you very much, Vincent. Right. Okay. So this is this is quite a cheap bass I'm playing here. This is an old, uh, I think it's like an early 90s Aria, maybe a late 80s one. Um, nothing fancy at all. I picked it up for very little money. Uh, let me just check the tune in over here. And I'm doing that because I didn't, I didn't want to sort of, you know, people get the impression that, you know, tone is all about you've got to have a really expensive instrument. Um, you know, it, it, uh, like I say, it's a lot of things. And uh, let me talk about round wound strings for a minute here. I'm guessing a lot of you know all about that, right? Uh, but round wound strings are generally a lot brighter sounding. Um, and they're going to give you that kind of growl, that, you know, that grit. Um, that is, is, is so sought after in, um, you know, rock um, and punk and styles like that. So let's see what we can get out of this cheap bass. Okay, let's have a look. So I'm going to pull up on the screen. I'm not exactly chuffed with what I just heard. So uh, let's have a look. I don't remember how I had this set up. Right, so I've got bit, uh, this is like an Ampeg, um, you know, SVT. So I'd scoop the mids a little bit, maybe a bit too much. I tried to drive it a bit. Let's see what we got. I could do with a bit more highs in there, I think. Let me just do that. All right. Let's see how it works with the track. Okay, so I'm just going to dial some more high end in there, right? I'm, I'm just feeling that's just needs a little bit. And there is um, a lot of you guys who use uh, Ampegs will know there's an ultra high. All right, drive it a little less. That treble up a little bit more. So that's getting more... That's getting more what I would consider a, a rock tone. Uh, like I say, I'm not that familiar with this bass. Uh, just getting a bit of clip in there. That might be on, on the output. Let me pull that down. So the other thing I'm doing there, talking about tone, is I'm playing very hard, right? So if I play soft, I get a much smoother sound. 
but I'm almost like almost striking the strings, you know. Uh, and you get that really kind of gritty kind of tone. Um, so yeah, that that's kind of. Uh, let's look at what I've got going on there. Uh, I've dipped the mids a little bit. I might bring those back in a little bit. I've cranked the highs. Now, unless my ears are going, uh, I'm not getting as much high stuff as I want. So I'm going to change. <laughs> I'm going to change the virtual mic here. I'm going to use a, a, an SM57. Let's see what we've got there. Duke, Duke was saying nice little dirt in that sound. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, so let's see what we've got going on. I've just um, I'm using the ultra high on this. Like I say, every amp's going to sound different. So, so this is very, very, very general. Uh, I've got the the gain cranked a little bit. I'm using this ultra high. I don't usually like to use things like that. I just needed more high end there. Uh, the bass up a little bit. Uh, this uh, I've pulled the mids down. Uh, that's kind of smooth things out. And I'm using this probably. I'm guessing about 400 hertz, something like that. That I'm dipping there. Uh, the treble. I've no idea. That's what it's boosting. Okay. Max that bugger out. <laughs> uh, and what it is, I'm also using some compression on, on, on the output section here. But Ampegs, to my money, they're not, they're not my, my favourite amp, but they, they act more like a guitar amp than a regular bass amp, and they kind of compress the sound a lot. You know, they kind of colour it a lot. Um, and you can really hammer away at the bass and it just kind of sounds great you know so let me just try that one more time with those little tweaks that's too much on the treble hey 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 Yeah, yeah, that's that's I'd kind of be happy with that. Like I say, this is a very, very cheap bass. It's got old strings on. It's got cheap pickups, and yet I'm pretty happy with that tone. Somebody else is here. We've got Alain Brasser. I hope I've said that correctly. He says, "Hi, Scott. This aria is my kind of bass. Uh, one of my basses is a Vantage SB25, made in Korea. I well, love it. I think this is a Korean one as well. Yeah, I is mean, it? they're great. He's, he loves it. He says, really, really light as well. You know, it is a Korean one actually. Yeah, I've got a fretless one back there. There, on, on there, on the chair, on the stair. Anyway, <laughs> so so let's look at other ways you might be able to get a rock tone, okay? Um, let me go down the... Hang on a second here. I think I just switched it up. Yeah, down the DI route. Right, now, let's pull this up. So what you're hearing now, let me just move that over. Let's get the amp out of the way. That's off now. What you're hearing now is without the amp sim at all. So this is a DI. Now, I'm not sure if I actually kind of prefer that. If I turn the, um, if I bypass the EQ, this is what the bass sounds like. Which doesn't sound bad. So this is no EQ. So if I was playing like that, um, that makes me want to use more of that finger set style and less of the click. Get get more of the, the middle, because you're letting the middle of the bass come through. I really like that. And depending on the track uh, or, the, or the song you're working on, that might work better. But just let me show you what I did. Again, just to smooth things out a little bit, um, I dipped the mids. Okay, so check it out. Here's without the EQ. Here's with it. Okay, so it's got more of an amp kind of tone about it. Let's try that with the drums. Just realised you couldn't see me then. So, I don't know if I almost prefer that to the amp sound in this particular case. It just... Depends sometimes on the bass. This sounds really good, DI'd actually. So just before we move on, again, what I've done is I've, I've boosted the lows a little bit. Now, bearing in mind this, 
this hasn't got flat wounds on, so it's it's inherently a brighter sounding instrument now because it's got round wounds on. So uh, to kind of compensate for that, I've boosted the lows a little bit. Uh, I've used this shelving thing, this this just a little bit to get rid of some of that what I call clank, and I'm also rolling off. The really, really low, this is like a low filter. I think I've got that set at about 40 hertz. Um, okay. But essentially, if you want to simplify that, I've boosted the bass a little bit. I've dipped the mids a little bit. And I've boosted the highs a tiny bit, but I've I've rolled them off. Okay, so uh so let's let's have a listen to that one more time. Okay, and you can modify that tone with the way you play, like I just demonstrated. You, you could play softer and get it cleaner, harder, get more grit, you know, and anywhere in between. One last thing I'm going to talk about. Uh, Jam- oh, go on, Jam. Gospel Blues Man saying, do you ever use the pick as that uh, another tone too? I do, and I'm going to talk about that next, actually. Yeah. Okay. So another thing that we can do is mix the amp sound with the the di so this is more of a recording thing right sometimes in the studio um by the way let me quickly talk about that if, if you're working in the studio i'd always recommend recording a clean di signal straight from from the instrument no matter what you do um amp wise and effects wise you know um, so you've always got that to go back to but quickly um i can bring a little bit of the amp in let me see with that let's just compare this is without the amp and this is with a bit of amp mixed in. And it's just kind of warming it up. So one last quick play around with. So that is your kind of rock tone in the bag, I would say. Uh, so let's move on. Slap tone. Uh, any thoughts, by the way, before while I'm loading this on the... Sorry, not slap tone, pick tone. While I'm loading the pick tone file. Vincent's actually saying to you, by the way, hope the gig's open up for you soon, Scott. Things are starting, up, uh, starting to open up in the States, which is great, because yeah. I know you've had it quite bad, I think, over there as well. Um especially in some places um and we've got 45 kelly green is saying you're an inspiration scott that's very kind oh you're inspirational yeah per, 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 perspirational <laughs> <laughs> i think you stinky scott <laughs> you don't have to join in she doesn't have to join in does she oh do you right uh, i need on, another though. bass where is it here we go <laughs> so i'm going to use this fella um uh, for the pick tone just you know, again, just going through different instruments, just showing you that, you know, you can achieve. Right. Okay. Let me just touch on this one. People say, uh, you know, it's not the instrument. You, you know, it's. People ask things like, "What's a good instrument for slap? What's a good bass for pick playing? What's good for rock?" And people will say on the forums, "It's not the bass. You can use anything." Well, that's right. Of course it is. And I'm a big believer. Like I'm going to show you some funk things with a pointy headstock in a minute. Right. Um, but there are certain bases that, say, like the um, Gibson EBO doesn't produce any treble at all. So it's just never going to work for slap. She's laughing over there. I'm so- <laughs> Sorry. 45 Kelly Green is now says perspirational too, yes. <laughs> and then we've got Pete Devlin says Mr. Pink Spir- Mr. Pinkspirational. <laughs> It's going well. I like I think it. I prefer this to the uh, the mute thing. I yeah, think we should definitely. Like the one who comes up with the, the funniest uh, term there. Yeah, perhaps wins the CD. What do you think instead? I think maybe, yeah. <laughs> Andy um, is saying, I've never used a pick in 35 years of playing. I used my fingernail when I needed that tone, but it was a slightly less aggressive, warmer tone. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, I'm diving straight into the, the pick thing now. Um, and... Yeah, it, 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 aggressive. It can be different things. The one I'm going to go for is is the more aggressive kind of rocky sort of thing. So let me let me just set my volumes over here. All right. Vincent saying every engineer seems to always want to use the P bass in the studio for some reason. The, they do. Yeah. Um, it it's because it works, you know, and um, and it's got. <sighs> 
I've got a love-hate relationship with P-Bases. This is kind of a P-Base. Um, the, these are like a split-coil pickup under here, right? And the thing is, the, the P-Base, the split-coil thing, it's got this gr growly, grainy kind of thing about it. You know, it's like... It's like a, a hammer, you know, it's like, you know, it's like, the, here's, here's the bass sound, you know, it's really full on and it's in your face and it, you know, you can do other things with it. But what I mean is, it's, it's, don't shoot me, it's, it's almost like a less refined, if you think of um, some of those, you know, jazz fusion tones that are really pure and all that, it's not that, it's, it's, it, it just, and it just cuts, it just sits at the right place in the mix. There are a load of other basses that work really, really well, but I think of all the instruments, um, engineers do tend to struggle a little bit with, with, with bass. It's an unusual instrument to, to get to sit right in the mix. Uh, and I guess they find a way that a P bass works and then they know that works and then just bring me a P bass, I, th I think. Um, but I've worked in, in loads of studios and live and, um, and I'm really stubborn and I don't usually even take a P bass. <laughs> And they're always chuffed with the results, you know. Um, so, uh, mm. yeah. Duke, Duke is saying less refined, I agree. Uh, Pete Devlin's saying, Gene Simmons always blew me away. I've never been able to use a pick. Uh, and he says, uh, 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 Vincent says, so do I, Scott. They're unbalanced, neck heavy, the body's too thick, etc., etc. But Gospel Bluesman said, but then there is... The PJ bass. Well, there is. You know, this is it. I mean, like I said before, there are no rules, you know, it, 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 and there are variations. And like I say, I, I hope it didn't sound like I, was, I love P basses, right? You know, um, it, it's just that I'm a nutcase <laughs> and I always need to, you know, make my own stamp on things. And, and you know, you um, like using all kinds of different basses. I do. Right? Like, yeah. uh, like pointy headstock basses was my latest <laughs> thing, you know. Um, anyway, let me just. Um, Yeah, I was, uh, out of all the tones so far, I'm <laughs> most pleased with that. That was, um, yeah, what I would consider a classic kind of rock uh, pick tone. Uh, and a P-based kind of tone at that, even though it doesn't look like it. Like I say, uh, it was on the front pickup and they are split. So quickly, let me show you what's going on there. I got um, the, this, it's another modelled Ampeg. Uh, anyone familiar with that? What's that meant to be? A B BA500, is that? Anyway, um, I've got quite a bit of gain. I'm driving it. I've got the bass up. I've got the mids way, way scooped out, right? So check out the difference. Here's the mids back in. Right. And then I'm going to pull them right the way out. Check it out. Okay. And then I've got the, 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 the highs boosted uh, quite considerably. And I've boosted the kind of... These, these sort of highs, which is, listen to this. That's that aggressive kind of tone, right? Just quickly, Jan's got a question, I think. Yeah, Vincent's asking, uh, do short scale P basses, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, get the classic P tone? I've often wondered about that. Absolutely. Uh, I've got one in my watched items, but I can't buy it because I've got no money. Uh, yeah, there's a, an SX uh, short scale. Uh, or is it? No, it's a Richwood one. Uh, there's a guy on Facebook, um, selling it go and buy it you should um, yes they do a, a, a just the same pretty much pretty much all right, all right. so um where was it going with this right so yeah that's how i'm getting that tone um and like i say it's quite an aggressive tone just very quickly talking about the hands and what you can do to change the tone there i was using a lot of dynamics there so i was doing that palm muting thing i don't know if you noticed that And then I really opened up on, on that F thing. I was just making it up as I went along, by the way. But uh, some of that clipping might be just because I'm 
uh, driving it a bit too much. But yeah, so that's your uh, classic rock tone. Any rock players got any tips, any way that they approach getting a rock tone? Let me just please Lee <laughs> by adding some distortion. Let me talk about this for a second. Uh, overdrive. I love, in the right place, overdrive on bass. It's really cool. Um, but for me, when I'm using this, this well, for, when anybody's using it, I think you've got to bear a few things in mind. Now, if you're really, really into distortions and stuff, you probably get a, a really fancy setup going on. But generally speaking, um, if you're using drives, you want one that's got a mix control, so you can just blend in. You can, you can, you can add, um, you can set the gain on your drive. Let me show you. Right, probably better. So this, this modelled. Um, drive here if i turn the mix up full so it's all distortion it sounds like this here we go which is pretty cool but it's not really a bass sound anymore you know it's just this uh thing that bass needs percussion you know and and distortion removes the percussion everything's like super compressed so if i use this mix control turn it all the way down no distortion, and then just bring it in. Right, what's going on now is we've got the regular bass sound with the distortion kind of surrounding that regular bass sound. Right, I'm just going to bring that up a tiny bit more, and that sounds super cool in a track. You know, it's a really, really cool tone. So that's, yeah, a yeah, bit of distortion for you there. Um, yeah, so I think that kind of covers the way I get a pick tone. I'm going to have to rush on it. <laughs> I'm taking the questions as we go. So I will open up at the end for questions. But, yeah, keep throwing them in. It's working that way. So we'll, let's go with it. All right. We have just got a few more to look at. Um, we have... I'm going to... While I'm on that, let me quickly just show you the um, the big country kind of tone, right? Because that's a pick tone. Um, so I'm just going to load another file up here. Any more questions come in, Janet? Sorry, I was having a drink oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's have a look. I'm going to go back to the beginning because there's been a few come along. All that right. we, you were obviously talking about what you were doing. Yep. So... Um, <clears throat> By the way, what do you think of the uh, the Ibanez? It's uh, I love this bass. Um, I got it for I don't know, like two hundred and fifty quid or something, and it was it would have been Ibanez's like it's a pro line, would have been their top of the range instrument back in the eighties. I think it's a nineteen eighty six seven something like that. Uh. We just uh, sort of briefly touched on this one earlier. Uh, yeah. Lee said, Scott, before you jump in, would you say you could use tones on an electro-acoustic bass? Right, yeah. Um, so so the first thing, um, it, it, ask him has the one he's got got any controls on it for a start? Well, I think he'll have heard you saying that. Ah, <laughs> I don't know. No, I, I don't know. It's some, some, have, some have like little EQs on them, you see. So just... <laughs> see what you're saying? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Oh, dear. I can't edit this either, can I? No, you can't. My goodness me. Right, anyway, forget that. You never saw it. <laughs> and <laughs> Who am I talking to myself? What, what like? did you want me to ask, Lee? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as you were, I'll come back to you on that. Uh, right. And then just uh, Andy uh, M65, he said, I think you should play Footloose, either the original or the Blake Shelton version. Great bass line to play. That'll give your fingers a great workout, Mr. W. Yeah. Can't say as I've done that one. Uh, I, I think I know the gu guitar part more, though. Something like that, isn't it? And he also says brain fart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, completely. <laughs> All right. So I've got here something. Let me see. Um, this is supposed to be my big country tone, but I'm not happy with it. I did edit these very, very quickly earlier. Let me just go in. Uh, let's sh let me show you. Look at this. It's appeared before this guy. Very cool. I'm just going to get some more of that slightly aggressive kind of highs in there. Let's try that. Right, the chorus might be a bit heavy duty as well. Pull the mix down of that. 
So that, yeah, I mean, that this is kind of like roughly the... Um, <laughs> this is roughly the, the, the big country tone I get, I think. Hang on. So yeah, it's it's somewhere near. Um, it's not as good as 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 the real stack, obviously. So just quickly, what's going on there? If anybody has used a Trace Elliot, they've got a, a thing, a contour, like a, a pre shape, right? And if I turn it off, it sounds like this. Let me turn that chorus off as well. Might not be the best chorus in the world. That check it out, right? So this is without the. Um, this, in fact, this is without any EQ at all. Check it out. <laughs> All right, and then if I turn the pre-shape on, listen to this. And uh, to be honest with you, I'm really happy with that now. You know, I don't know what I was hearing earlier. So that's just the pre-shape. If I was to draw that on an EQ, um, it, would, it would look something like... It's something, but I think it boosts really low, like about 40 hertz or something. Crazy low. And then it dips around 400, and then it boosts around, I think it's about 5K. All right. So it would look something like that. Let's see if I've got that anywhere near. Let me compare it. it it's never the same. The pre shape's very, it's almost a secret thing. So that's the pre shape. All right. And then it, this is my. EQ. So it just needs a bit more severity of dip and boost, I would say. Try that. Near enough. All right, let's move on. Any more questions, Janet Whitley? Yeah, um, we've got uh, Sean P. Bass says, uh, though you have actually used some of this, it says, uh, love the way you don't use top end basses to prove that anyone can learn for a small outlay. Keep it real, Scott. You have, haven't you? You've had some very expensive basses, but you actually get quite a kick out of the cheap ones, don't you, to, to show that you can get a great sound? Yeah, I, I do, Jan, I do. You know, um, th there's, um, there's a funny phrase that people use, you know, they, 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 they say like, oh, this is a good bass for a beginner, you know. And then when you get better, you could get a really good instrument. And 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 it's a funny thing because really the the expert player would probably get a better sound out of the cheap bass, right? You know. Um, and in my experience, as long as the instrument's set up right, and that's the difference. Quite often, um, a cheap bass just isn't set up right at all, you know. Um, so, but you know, there's a, a Brian Eastwood. Uh, he's a local guy, um, and and I'm sure everyone will have like local luthiers, um, you know. Not a crazy amount of money. You can have, you know, the, the frets leveled and, and, you know, the neck shimmed. If you can't do this stuff, you, I do it all myself pretty much. You're um, right, and it makes all the difference, don't you? makes say? all the difference, you know. You, it re really, I, I absolutely would, you know, I, I wouldn't be afraid to do a blindfold test with, you know, like a 50 quid, uh, you know, gear for music P bass, if they are actually that cheap, you know, against a two and a half grand custom shop thing, you know, like blindfold. Um, if it's set up right and it's got good strings on it and maybe better pickups, to be fair, which aren't that much. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, and I can't keep expensive instruments because I end up selling them to buy sports cars and stuff, don't I? <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> you used to. That's it. <laughs> uh, Pat Delaney says, I put together some synth presets, uh, fuzz octave filter uh, that sound great at home. Live, they get completely lost. Have you got any tips? And yes, he had. An actual gig last Saturday. Oh, wow. Well done. Yeah. I bet that was amazing. And he's still here to tell the tale, so it's, it's uh, good. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Just really quickly, one of the things um, with EQ and things like that is, uh, and, and that and that's tone in general, is um, when, when you start doing a lot of dipping and boosting, when you boost lows and dip a lot of mids and boost, you know, when you get really extreme with that stuff, amplifiers work less efficiently. Um and sounds cut less and things like that. So generally, in a live setting, um, I find it, it's best to 
to keep as the, the the sort of general EQ of tones, unless there's a real reason for it, quite you know quite as flat-ish. You know, um, don't go too extreme. Um, I don't know if that helps in this particular instance, but it certainly is something worth bearing in mind with bass sounds. Right, uh, we've got seven minutes left, so it's not that bad. Um, hope you're enjoying it, folks. You enjoying it, Jan? I'm enjoying it, yeah. It's, it's been a while. It's, it's good having you here, Jan. It really is. <laughs> Thing is, there's two, two of us talking, though, so... That's it. It takes longer. <laughs> so, here you go. This is a... So that's not far off, uh, I don't think, King's 80 stone. Let's try it with some drums. <laughs> okay, that, yeah, that's that classic kind of, um, you know, I, actually I should boost the lows a little bit more. Yeah, uh, that classic 80s live uh, Mark King sound. Let's have a look at how we're doing that. Well, the first thing, actually, I always like to try and figure things out for myself, and, and I'm not sure, because I figure if you do that, um, you you kind of learn, you know, you learn that bit more, certainly if you experiment, you do. Uh, and I'm pretty convinced that what he had going on on those JDs, and I bet there's like some real experts out there on Mark King's tone that, that know the answer. But I'm pretty convinced that he uh, was like boosting the lows a, a, quite a bit. I know he was with the uh, you know the, the statuses, you know, uh, and the highs quite. I think quite aggressively. Sounds like it to me, and probably dipping the mids quite aggressively. Now this hasn't got a mid control, so um, so all I'm doing is boosting the the the, the bass and treble because so, this is an active bass, and then I've got the pickup selector on on the bridge pickup soloed um and like i say it was it's kind of like a nasty old sound but we all love it you know it's like punk slap you know uh it's really in your face and um yeah and then of course uh we've got the the, the pre-shape i've got the trace elliot thing so again if you don't have you know this kind of setup uh i'll show you another way you can do it more or less with eq uh, again boosting more just uh, it's a whole load of boosting lows and highs and having it on the the bridge pickup and that um and this is nothing to do with a jd you know but it's not it's not far off let me show you uh the alternative way i tried to get a similar tone i think ray boyle's enjoying your slapping <laughs> he says, oh, yes, now we're talking. <laughs> he's, a, he's an out slapper. That's me I'm talking about, by the way. Stinky slapper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the out slapper. <laughs> right, so there you go. Check it out. This is the amp tone. All right, model amp tone, but it's 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 pretty good. This is the, the model amp tone. Right, turn that down. And then this is the DI tone. Again, you know, it's not far off, is it? Ray's saying that's so clean for a cheap bass. Yeah, well, this particular one, you see, this is a funny, this actually would have been a very expensive bass when it, when it was new. Uh, but because it has points on it, <laughs> it's, ah, ah. it's virtually worthless. <laughs> but it's a freaking brilliant bass, you know? Um, so yeah, let me, let Kathleen me... Forsyth saying she can't seem to get slapping. Frustrating. Yeah. But you do lessons, Scott, don't I you? I do do lessons. Yeah, and Kathleen, I'm I'm... If, you, if you want any lessons to get slapping, Scott's the man. By the way, have you mentioned the Super Chat, Janet Whitley? Has anybody... Uh... The Super Chat, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, if you want to ask a question... Uh, just before obviously Scott's going away and you want it to jump right to the top so you get an answer uh, there's the super chat and you can just basically donate some money you know to, for Scott's time or whatever and it uh, all helps and your question will go straight to the top and it won't get missed I can't fault you uh, and a chance to win and in your shoe, in my shoe CD. Well, isn't that if they come up with the best? That's two. There's two chances now. <laughs> That's two. So yeah, get your your silly bass mute ideas in and, <laughs> and, and, and get super chat in your asses off 
and you'll win a CD. Ray Boyle saying I was by the deodorant team. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> right, come on. This is going nowhere. It okay. Isn't. <laughs> right. So this is how I've, I've, I've sort of emulated that um, that Mark King amp sound, right? Okay. If you just look at this this kind of thing, this is the EQ that's going on. I've just boosted the lows here <laughs> a lot. I've dipped the mids considerably, right? Uh, and all the way, like I've got two mid controls, so I've dipped a lot of mids and I've boosted the highs and then I've rolled off, check it out, you know, that the really high frequencies because Mark King didn't have, uh, he didn't have tweeters in those early rigs, you know. Um, he had bright boxes, these little tiny speakers. Um, but even that was after a while. So, um, so yeah, it's a very amp kind of tone. Uh, yeah, and... <laughs> And th there is some chorus on that as well, on both the t sounds, I should have said. If I turn that off... Um, there you go. Right, what we got left? Any more questions? Uh, yeah, I mean, it might just be perfect timing for you to sort of say what's going, uh, what's happening with your stuff, because Vincent's asking, have you considered a Patreon channel, Scott? So you could maybe update everybody as to what you're doing and yeah, sure, yeah. Where well, it's all look, going. Let me just change. I'm just uh, pull a track up and then I'll get into that. Yeah. So the way things are going is I'm really, really working hard on the YouTube channel. So um, there's going to be uh, some of you might have got my email actually. I'm not going to be doing the um, what they call the premieres on Sundays, but every Sunday at four o'clock there's going to be a new video every single week. Um, so kind of, I'm trying to keep that a regular thing. Um, I'm going to be doing maybe one of these a month, I think, uh, on a different topic each time. So let me know in the comments below uh, if you're enjoying it and if you have any suggestions for other workshops you'd like me to do. And I think uh, we've already had one, haven't we? Uh, the short scale bass. Yeah. Uh, super chats are great where you can just instantly um, support the channel right now. Um, also, you can become a member of the YouTube channel. I think Lee is, which is great. You can just join for a tiny, tiny little amount, but it all adds up. Um, and then long-term, I'm going to be doing a lot of, I'm going to keep doing the free stuff on YouTube, uh, but YouTube likes immediacy, likes short videos. I hope you like the way I'm editing the videos now. I'm, I'm trying to get much more to the point. I edit a lot of the fluff out there. Um, and so that means I'm going to be doing behind the scenes some much more in-depth uh, full song lessons, which I can't really put on YouTube. So they're going to be available as like downloadable courses um, that you can you can buy on top of the free stuff. So keep looking out for that as well. Also, um, like, uh, for instance, Kathleen, um, you know, she was saying, saying about the slapping and she can't seem to get it together. Uh, but you do one-to-one -one lessons as well, don't you? I do one-to-one. -one. Yeah, I've only got very, very, very limited uh, places for that because the, the YouTube thing's taking a lot of time up. It's all speculative. It's, it's you know, it's it's mad, but um, I believe it's going to work, so uh, I'm sticking at it. But, yeah, I've still got a few. It's probably about three spaces I've got for lessons. So if you want, if you can email me, if you're interested, on scott at scott-whitley.com uh, and we can sort that out. But I am planning to do um, a, a, a more in-depth slap course than slap basics. Um, and again, that's going to be a, a paid course. It's going to be not that expensive, but it's going to be hours and hours and hours of tu tutoring in that in, in unbelievable detail. You um, are considering as well, aren't you? If people are interested, maybe, maybe you could um, drop it down in the messages. But uh, you're thinking, aren't you, of actually holding maybe like a workshop, maybe limiting it to about 10 places. Yep, uh, yep. Maybe half a day or something like that. Um, so if, if that's something you'd be interested in, just drop it in the comments below um, so that he knows, you know, whether to get one going or not. She's good, isn't she? Right. So I've got two more <laughs> tones. Thanks, Jan. Two more tones I'm going to share with you. This is kind of what I consider like my default kind of tone, right? Um, I like... Uh, using both pickups. When you use both pickups on a bass, uh, it, you, know, you probably know if, if you've got a two pickup bass, but you get this lovely kind of, um, you get this phase thing going, cancellation going on, and you get this really different tone to the two individual pickups, right? So, um, uh, so that is just, that's the EQ flat and both pickups on. And that is my favorite kind of tone. If I just kind of pick the bass up to play, 
there's no EQ going on, maybe a little bit of compression, um, and that that's it, you know. And what you can do, you can change the technique, you can play softly. Or if you play really hard, you know, you can get a, a really different sound. It sounds great for slap. And if I just boost the lows and highs a little bit on the bass. And that's it. That's all I'm doing. There's no EQ going on there at all, apart from that little boost on the bass and treble. And and so that's that's kind of like my go-to, if you like, sound. But it's not the right sound for every track. You know, I'll, I'll often record with that sound and then go, it wants more of an aggressive kind of um, amp sound. Um, so, yeah. So just one more sound to look at before y'all go, because uh, we've run over time a little bit, I think. Um, any more questions coming in, Jan? Yeah. Um, I, I think it's Nico. Uh it says, have you ever tried Labella 800M Jazz Black Nylon on your piccolo bass? No, no, I haven't. So um, who's that asking that, sorry? I think it's Nico. Nikos, Nico. Now, are these, so are these, um, are they piccolo strings? Are they, are they designed to be tuned higher than, than regular, or are they regular bass strings? Are you asking me? Or? I'm, I'm asking him. I'm not <laughs> right. doing that again. Don't worry. It's all good. <laughs> All right, I'm going to switch up basses for this, uh, and I'm going to I'm, I'm going to play an expensive bass to finish off. Well, expensive in my book, right? Juka says he's enjoying this very much, and he also says a workshop sounds good. Cool, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll put some thought into that, um, and I'll get my uh, <laughs> I'll get my PA on it. You know. That's it. <laughs> you were talking about 10 places so you could sort of speak to everybody, you know, if you so you haven't got too many, basically. And yeah, that's it. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that's weird, isn't it? Why does it sound like that? <laughs> I like the look of that bass. It's very cool. Yeah. Right. So what I had going on, see, I'd, I'd set this tone up with, um, actually with that Ibanez back there, right? But this is sounding a little bit muddy. So what I'm going to try and do here is um, I'm looking at that kind of flea kind of tone, you know, that really rocky uh, kind of thing. Sorry, Scott, by the way, the labella, uh, Black Sorry. Nylon, he's uh, saying no, the guitar strings, ah. but you can use 67 to 36 size ones. Right. As he, so obviously that'll be in the chat. I'll check those out. Thanks for, for the tip. So I'm, I'm guessing you get more of a... A jazz guitar kind of sound, right? With with us, um, I'm asking him. By the way, jazz. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we've got here. I'm just going to change the. Uh, sorry, you've been looking at this for ages, guys, haven't you? I apologise about that. Uh, I'm going to use a, a 57, so it's not quite. No, I don't like that. Change it back. Let's have a look. So this is weird. I had this pinned as quite a bright bass. Where's it gone? <laughs> right, I'm going to try the ultra high. Let's just do it. And there we go. All right, so this is kind of like when I get it right. All right, it's not it's not as good as I'd like it. Let me change that mic back. All I'm trying to do is get the flea kind of tone, right? Um, let's see what we have here. Let me try some different mics. Uh, go back to... The... Bye, Pat. Uh, Pat Delaney's got to go. All Cheers, right. all later. See you, mate. And Vincent Sansoni. Um, yeah, Patreon is a good place for the workshop, um, but the uh, workshop wouldn't actually be a free workshop. If there were like ten people, it would be. Um, you know, there would be a fee for that. So yeah, uh, yeah. I apologise. I've got. Um, ah, here we go. Right. Let me just start all over again with this one, um, and quickly talk about that workshop idea. <laughs> Right, let's do that. Here we go. Yeah. So what, what I was thinking is, um, yeah, did you say about 10 places, Jam? Yeah, if you're limiting it, because you wanted to be able to uh, 
there not be too many people so you could kind of dedicate that's right time to each yeah, person yeah so it, it's going to be kind of be like almost like a one-to-one -one. you'll be able to you know um it, the vision is you'll be able to if if you want be there with your bass uh i'll be able to switch your mic on if you so wish and you'll be able to uh, play stuff you know and we can kind of um you know and we can work as a group uh, which i used to do in you know like real life if you like uh, years ago and it always worked really well so right here we go let's so so what i'm saying is normally when people talk about slap you know like you think of the uh, the, the modern plays it's a very clean clinical almost kind of sound um uh, whereas flea always like cranked I th i'm presuming it was like an svt or something like that that sort of thing you know that's cranked a little too much janet isn't it <laughs> anthony great Banks says the bass does sound good even though it could poke somebody's eye out <laughs> what this one Wait, i'm assuming he's been in the pointy head he might oh, mean that? this sometimes right when you know when i'm shooting videos <laughs> i sit there like this and then i look down and i think oh it doesn't look right that does it so um so yeah let's let's give it so this is like uh yeah my little crack a, a kind of more rocky sort of uh it's too drivey that. Let's just go with it. Yeah, that's more like the flea kind of sound. So just quickly, I'm gonna. That, this is the last one, and I, I realise you were looking at a bloody amp <laughs> all the way through that. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we've got um, the mids really, really dipped. Uh, it's playing through an SVT, uh, mic'd up cab, um, you know, and that's a very kind of you know like dirty, if you like. Um, kind of slap thing. So I'm going to wind it up there. I kind of really ran over time. Hope you enjoyed it. Any last minute questions before we wrap it up? Or has everyone got the coke already? Uh, well, the, basically, there's a, a few people sort of saying about um, Patreon's a great thing. Now, you, do you want to just sort of fill people in with where you're at with Patreon? Or? Well, so look, right, the, the, the ways you can support me at the minute, um, I'm just going to be like cards on table about this. Obviously, I liked the notion that I'd put a lot of work and, um, and time into the YouTube channel over the years. And I set up the thing called the channel membership. And I hope that people would kind of just, you know, like click it and, and, and just give a bit back. But I think most people, and I'm like that, uh, prefer to have some kind of an exchange, you know. So that's the way I'm kind of working now. I'm going to like keep doing the free stuff, but then set up particular courses and things like that. And they'll either be like, you know, a set fee for that workshop. Uh, I'll be doing free ones on here as well, but these will be where you can actually, uh, you know, get your camera on you and we can, we can talk one-to-one -one and stuff. And like I say, no more than groups of 10. And I'll be making downloadable courses as, as well. Um, but at the minute, really, the only the only ways that um, you can you can directly support the channel are either becoming a channel member, which is a little button on if you're on YouTube. Actually, uh, you can see, and it can be I think at one dollar a month or something. You can cancel it any time. Uh, I have got a Patreon. I'm not going to link to it because I'm not used it in a while. I think I get eleven dollars a month from it or something. But if you can, if you go on Patreon and search Scott Whitley Bass, you'll find me. So if you know if you want to join in on there, um, that's cool. Um, I know about the other way it works, so I might look, look into that. That might be the way I might do the workshops, for example. Um, and I think, and there's a super chat in 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 on YouTube that you can you can uh, click on. Now, so I think that's about it. Yeah, so that's about it from me and Jan as well for this week. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Sorry, it went over a little bit longer than usual, but uh, it's the first one I've done. Um, hope you enjoyed the format. Um, I think taking questions as we moved from point to point was pretty cool um again if you've got any suggestions for future workshops and if you're watching this after the video is live just pop them in the comments below but aside from that uh it's goodbye from me and it's goodbye from me <laughs> see you later guys bye bye